So if you're anything like me, you've had a bunch of problems in the past with getting different 3D model files to actually work together, right? You might work with a SketchUp file to create your building, but then you might want to use um, external files to have plants or context models or other things like that. And right now, programs just aren't really set up to do that. And so right now there's issues with kind of bringing all those files together. And so a lot of companies are working on that. And I wanted to check out one possible solution to that issue. Okay, so this is NVIDIA Omniverse. NVIDIA Omniverse is a tool designed by NVIDIA to help you start bringing different models together into one place and allow them to kind of start talking with each other and coexisting in the same location. And so NVIDIA is building all of these tools specifically because they're trying to get in front of the idea of the metaverse, right? The metaverse is basically the idea that while we currently experience um, the internet through our screens, eventually people are going to experience the internet as more of a place inside of like virtual reality, um, other access methods like that. So what NVIDIA is trying to do is they're trying to build out a tool set that allows people to more quickly populate that space. And so because of that, we as SketchUp users can benefit. Okay, and so basically the Omniverse is a place where you can download different apps to do different things in 3D. So as SketchUp users, we're going to focus on things like the View app. So the Omniverse View app is basically a tool that allows us to visualize um, our 3D designs in kind of a rendered space. So basically what you do is you export your models to it and it'll allow you to render them. You can kind of mess around with your different materials and other things like that. It's basically a free real-time renderer. Now, one thing I have not mentioned up to this point, note that the Omniverse apps are only going to work on graphics cards that have RTX enabled. So if you don't have an RTX card, none of this is going to work. I actually have to do all of this on my laptop because my desktop currently does not have an RTX card. That's limited to newer versions of NVIDIA cards. So if you're using a different company's graphics cards or anything like that, this isn't going to work for you. Um, I have no idea if that's because this is built on some kind of proprietary technology that they need in order to make it work, or if NVIDIA is just building something that works with their hardware. I don't know anything about the technical limitations. I just know that if you don't have RTX, it's not going to work. Um, but we've got apps like View, which are going to allow you to do real-time rendering in 3D. And then you've also got tools like Create. And so Create is a more advanced tool that allows you to not only do real-time rendering, but it also allows you to do things like importing more complex animations and doing physics simulations. So there's simulations for things like uh, for things like rigid bodies, so like these marbles, right, and how they interact with everything around them. But then also more complex things like uh, NVIDIA Flow. So flow is something that basically allows you to simulate things like fluid and fire and other things like that. We're not gonna get too much into that. Um, you're probably not doing too much with those things, but the idea is this is building a tool set that's gonna allow you to bring in all sorts of different models into one place and do this stuff in that one place. There are some other kind of crazy cutting edge things going on right now. So like for example, the audio to face is a good one. The audio to face basically takes an audio file and it uses artificial intelligence to rig up a model. So basically you record audio, you put it into the app and then it uses AI to automatically rig a face that's saying the words that are in the audio file. So what it's doing is it's really giving us a quicker way to simulate things like speech or create different 3D models or bring things together. And it's all built around that idea that we need to be able to bring those 3D models together to create those metaverse experiences. Um, but as SketchUp users, again, that means that we've got access to this really interesting um, RTX and real-time rendering technology. All right, so let's get a little more practical with what we can do with this. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the Omniverse page and click on Get Started. And from there, you want to download the individual version of the Omniverse launcher. And so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to download this individual launcher right here. And so when you download this and install it, what it's going to do is it's going to give you access to this Omniverse launcher tool that opens up. This is going to give you access to things like uh, your different library of different apps that you can use in order to create things as well as um, the SketchUp connector, which is what you're going to have to use in order to actually send things to the Omniverse from SketchUp. And so basically what you want to do is you want to install that SketchUp connector plugin, which you can find by going into the Omniverse launcher, going into the exchange and just looking for SketchUp. 
and that's going to give you the Trimble SketchUp Omniverse connector, which you can install. That's basically going to install a SketchUp plugin that looks something like this that allows you to export things to the Omniverse. Now, you do need some other things on your computer for this to work. So first off, if you want to view your models, you're going to want to install the View app. So the Omniverse View app. That's basically going to be the tool that we're going to use in order to um, view our model. So you may want to install Create as well. You can find both of those on the Exchange. Um, I think they're going to be under the Featured tab. But you just want to click on this and you just want to install Omniverse View. Or you want to click on this and install Omniverse Create. So probably both of those. But then, once you've done that, we can go ahead and we can start sending things to the Omniverse. Okay, and so once you have all of that installed, the other thing you need to do is you need to link this to an Omniverse installation, right? So this needs to have somewhere to send this. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're just gonna click on the Omniverse settings button right here. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to set our send to Omniverse settings. And you're just gonna to wanna to set to send to locally installed viewer. And if you click on the drop down, this should show you whatever you have installed, right? So I have view and create in here. So in this case, I'm just gonna set it to be view right here when we do that. And so then we're just gonna click on save. And I can't remember, there might have been another step in here where you actually need to enable that server that it publishes it to. Um, I've already gone through that, so I can't remember on that one. Let, let me know what you see once you get that view set up. And so I'm going to go ahead and take one of these featured community models and just download it into SketchUp real quick. And I'm going to place it, but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to send that to Omniverse. So to do that, all I have to do is click on this button right here. And like I said, you may need to set up a server. Um, I can't remember exactly how that worked, but once you get that set up, we're gonna click on this button right here to publish this to Omniverse View. That's gonna pop up the Omniverse View window right here. And so you can see what this has done is this has basically taken our materials, uh, it's taken our model and it's brought them in and it's now rendering them. All right, so this is gonna bring your SketchUp model in and then it's gonna, then it's gonna start rendering it in real time. And so you can bring in things like different environments like this and you can actually adjust them using the sun study button in here. And notice how that's actually moving my environment around and adjusting the lighting that's in here. So you also get access to things like their asset browser and their material browser. So their material browser actually automatically links to some higher quality materials right here. So you can see I have all of these materials and I can just drag them in. Right, so I've got all these different materials. Let's say, for example, that we wanted a stone. We could do a search right here, and we could drag the stone wall and replace materials on objects inside of SketchUp. So if I drag this in here, notice how this is actually going to replace that material with this new material right here. And so that can be especially helpful because that can allow you to get higher quality materials into your SketchUp model really quickly. And so you can also bring things in from their asset library. Like for example, they've got like trees and other things like that that you can bring in here. And so overall, so overall I think this is um, meant as more of like a quick collaboration type tool, that kind of thing. So we can take this, we can adjust that lighting a little bit, and then we can take a screenshot. And so this acts a little bit more as a viewer than anything else, um, but you do have options for like different ways to move around. So like teleporting, other things like that. I can't remember, I think you might be able to plug this into VR. I'm not 100% sure on that one. Um, but then you can also go back to like your home view, you can export different images, other things like that. So it's an interesting viewer app. And then if you decide that you wanna go further with it, what you can do is you can take this model and you can send it to create. So there's a file, send to create. And remember that create is going to be a more powerful tool for doing different things with your model. And so create is just gonna give you access to more tools. Like for example, remember before we had those NVIDIA assets we can bring in, this also gives you access to different asset stores. So you can find different paid or free asset stores in here. Like for example, if you look at this, um, these are coming from, like I think these are coming from Turbo Squid. So this is actually linked into things like, uh, this is actually linked into things like Sketchfab, as well as things like Turbo Squid. So you can come in here and you can find models from those. So let's say for example that we wanted to bring in a car right here. And then once that downloads, you can just drag it directly into your viewport in order to import it. And you may have to do some things with like orientation of the vehicle, obviously, in order to get it where you wanna be. But you can see how you can bring in those external files 
and you can include them as part of your rendering as well. So inside of Create, you can also add objects. So like if I right click, right, I could create a mesh, like a cube, for example. Not only can I create that mesh, but I can also add physics to it. So if I go into physics, right, I can go ahead and I can add a rigid body to this. And then if I click on play, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna fall down. And obviously it didn't collide with the ground right here. So I might add physics to that. And I'll just add a ground plane. But now if I click on play, notice how that's gonna hit that ground plane. So you can actually use this to simulate physics or create more advanced animations from your models as well. So there's a bunch of other stuff that you can do in here as well. So adding and adjusting different materials, other things like that. So like for example, if I wanted this to be a different color, I could drag this blue material in here. So we can adjust different colors and I applied it to the whole thing, but there's different individual pieces of the car that you could apply this to as well. So having used this a little bit, my conclusion is this is something that's really interesting. It's in development and we should definitely be tracking it. I don't think it's quite ready to the point where we're gonna replace our rendering software or anything like that, but it does give you a free option if you have an RTX card to start bringing in those different files together. I had hoped that it was something where I might be able to like export the files to something like Unreal after the fact, but I understand why it's being kept inside of the NVIDIA ecosystem. So the other thing though is in the future where this is really gonna get beneficial, I think is some of the integrations. So things like the physics, things like being able to import the animated characters and rig things and other things like that, I think is gonna be really valuable. So we could do our initial model setup in SketchUp and then bring that here and bring in the other parts and pieces as well. So super interesting to me. Um, I recommend if you do have an RTX card, you at least download it and give it a try. I mean, it's free, so why wouldn't you? Um, not necessarily recommending it becomes like a full-time tool for you just yet, but let's keep an eye on it because I'm really excited to see where it's going to go. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.